Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. A lot has been written about how Master Mose changes the world of dogfighting, and I do mean a lot. But not everybody is an Avenger 1. Some folks, like Ray, when the call comes in from Agent Dooley, jump up and say, Quick, the UEE has cargo that needs to be loaded and moved. And since the root word of the commercial pilot is commerce, then time is money and I'll be trying a simple route that I know makes about a half hour to complete. Bed log at R Corp to Bajini, get cargo, and return to the Area 18 TDD. Roughly a half hour. This isn't going to be a great comparison, though, because I'm unpracticed with the new methods, and the EPTU server is being very unresponsive at times, taking many seconds to do something that should be instant. Now the patch notes have just come out, and there's some key bindings that have changed, and some that are to be changed in an upcoming build. So I will try to note how things are working now and how things are going to be working real soon now. Next, if you've taken high school physics, much less collegiate physics, your reaction to many things about master modes is going to be, that makes no sense. And it doesn't. If you want realistic physics, buy a copy of Kerbal Space Program. Great game, by the way. And it will tell you a lot about real world astrophysics and at the same time, help you understand that real-world physics wouldn't be that much fun in a game like Star Citizen. But another thing to bear in mind is that there is presumed to be a layer of in-world software between us and the real physics of the verse, called the IFCS, or Intelligent Flight Control System. What we are doing with our mice, keyboards, joysticks, controllers, etc. is presumed to be inputs into IFCS. And the output from IFCS is the actual thrust, control surfaces, etc. And IFCS is actually a real-world thing. You can Google the term. For example, the reason that the Hawker Harrier is considered a challenging plane to fly and the Lockheed F-35C is considered a forgiving VTOL plane is because the F-35C has software that allows the pilot to only have to move the stick where they want to go rather than controlling the actual thrust. In other words, an IFCS. Now, I find it easier to describe the IFCS under master modes as having five speed ranges. The first is landing speed. Landing speed is limited to 20 or 30 meters per second, although you can momentarily increase it with boost power. Now, some have complained that landing gear should not be damaged by air speeds that low, but it isn't about the air speed. It's about how fast we're slamming the landing gear into the pad. So the first habit you'll need to change is to get your feet up as soon as you are clear of the hangar or safely off the pad. I know I have in the past been lazy and left the gear down until they are lifted automatically with quantum travel. Not anymore. Now once you've pulled your gear up, you'll be in SCM or standard control mode, which is a fairly low top speed, but again, you can up it with boosting. SCM speed is necessary in order to use any other operator mode such as mining, salvage, scanning, missile, etc. A very important thing though is that your throttle has changed. There are now two modes to it, switched between them with Alt-C. In the original mode, pushing, increasing the throttle, increased the speed, and when released, the speed would proceed back to zero. The second mode replaces what was called cruise control. So I call this the cruise throttle. In this new cruise mode, the square on the speed scale will switch to a circle, which kind of looks like a target, which is what it is, the target speed. There will also be a half circle that looks like it could be a hat on top of the circle, which is what it is. It is the cap. Moving the throttle changes the target speed, while the scroll wheel changes the cap. When you let go of the throttle, this mode, the speed stays at the target. There are also new features of the regular throttle. Specifically, this is called throttle trim. This means that you can push the throttle to a particular point and then hit the trim set button and then let go of the throttle and it will stay at that level even though you've let go of the throttle. You then have to use a trim release button to again have the throttle be active. This might seem similar to the cruise throttle mode since in both cases you're able to let go of the throttle and have it not go to zero. But the cruise throttle sets a speed while the throttle trim locks a particular throttle position. 
For keyboard users, there are also a set of throttle keybinds. So you can have, say, 25, 50, 75, and 100% all bound to keys. So this is important. Always stay cognizant of what mode your throttle is in and whether the trim setting is active. Much like slipping into decoupled mode by accident, being in a different throttle mode than you think you are can be a disaster. When you get close to the maximum SCM speed for your ship, the B key will transition you to nav mode, which unlocks up to your max speed, but makes your guns inactive and makes your shields ineffective. Note that unlike some prior descriptions, your shields do not go down. They are simply ineffective. This has implications for whether you are vulnerable when you return from nav to SCM speeds. Now there has been a promise of a quantum nav mode that will be useful for non-interplanetary distances, but that is not implemented in 3.23.0. So you go to the star map, pull back a bit to get the search box, select Bajini Point, and we're ready to go once quantum drive is calibrated. Now they will be changing activating quantum drive to a long left mouse button, but for the moment it is still a long B key press. Arriving at the end of quantum travel, I'm going to want to save time by keeping my speed up. If I see trouble, I might decide to decelerate quickly to SCM speed to get my shields and guns up, but otherwise, safety is getting as quickly as possible inside the defensive perimeter of the station. If this were some sort of undefended outpost, the logic would be different, and I'd want to be sure to approach at a speed that I can defend myself at. Either way though, wasting time is just giving time for trouble to notice you. So keep your gear up until you are lined up with the pad or hangar and only a few hundred meters out. I suspect there will be other creative ways that pilots will find to use lowering the landing gear as a kind of space break. For example, if I became disoriented close to the ground on a dark planet, dropping the gear might be a quick precaution against a catastrophic crash. Anyway, I did not go into how a commercial pilot would use master modes if they ever got into combat because the goal of a commercial pilot is to have that happen as little as possible. And so I really haven't had time or opportunity to hone a set of tactics enough that I can say, do this. Other than to say that most others are saying about dogfighting is likely not good advice. Because as a commercial pilot, you're not a dog doing dogfighting. You're a hog doing hogfighting. Dogs want to sink their teeth in you. Hogs want to get away. So depending on the situation, you are going to be either delaying until your help arrives or trying to maneuver them into an arrangement that leaves you an opening to quantum out of there. On the other hand, a surprise was awaiting me when I returned to Area 18 that wasn't to my knowledge in the patch notes. Riker's spaceport is now marked by a sequence of very bright beacons extending high up above it, making it much easier to find. Will this be the new standard marking for a spaceport? I hope so. Anyhow, the final wrap up was the round trip took me about 35 minutes to complete. Slightly slower than before, but probably not considering the server responsiveness problems and being unfamiliar with all that is new. Now for an update on our giveaways, we have the special C at CitizenCon promotion for the colossal cargo container carrying craft, the Hull C, with a special membership level just for it. See the link video on the details for that. And then we have our regular giveaway for the Zippy Zazzy Zaftig Zephyr, the Zeus 2 Cargo, as well as the multi-user, multi-role mining mighty, the Arasta. For those, one entry per video, just be a member at any level for automatic entry, or be a subscriber and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video is what I was surprised to see at Area 18. Fly safe, keep it real, I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.